Hello and welcome, Martin here from R2 Electrical. In this video, we'll go through how to wire up a UK plug using just the sort of tools that you'd find in your home. The tools that you'll need are a medium Phillips or crosshead screwdriver, a sharp knife such as a Stanley knife, and a pair of wire cutters. Or if you haven't got a pair of these, a pair of scissors should do the job. Here's a typical plug that you'd get from any supermarket. Many of them come with a removable diagram on the back, which is actually quite useful, telling you what the various parts are and how long to cut each wire. But for now, I'll just take it off and put it to one side. So here we have the plug, and it's actually in two parts held together by that screw. And these two screws here are the thing that hold the cord into it. So the first step is to undo all three of these screws and take it into its two parts. So here we are undoing the main screw and the two cord grip screws, number one and number two and then simply popping it open to reveal what's inside. So let's take a quick closer look at the plug itself. What I've done is used the card that come with the plug to color it in to show you which wire goes where. Now on the bottom left hand side, you've got the blue wire, which is connected to the neutral terminal. On the bottom right hand side, you've got the brown wire connected to the live terminal and the 13 amp fuse in this case. And in the middle, you've got the green and yellow wire that's connected to the earth. And down the bottom, you've got the cord grip, which holds the cord securely in place. So now that we've got a good idea where everything goes, it's time to prepare the cable to insert into the plug. So lie your cable on a bench and take your sharp knife and you want to be cutting about 4 centimetres, 40 millimetres off. Gently roll the knife over the sheath, making sure you don't cut all the way through to the cables underneath. Like so. Give it a good bend, which will break the outer sheath off. And then give it a pull. And there we go, it's ready. This stage is worth making sure that you haven't actually cut all the way through into any of the conductors underneath. This appears to be fine. It looks good. So now we're ready to cut the three cables to the size that we need to go into the plug. And it's quite easy to remember. We want to cut the earth in the middle to about four centimeters to the base of the white sheath. The blue is 30 and the brown is 20. There we have it. So just as we did before, lay out the cables on a flat surface and taking your sharp knife, take about five or six mil off the end of the earth in this case, gently rolling it like so. And if you've got any fingernails, which I don't, but there we are, give it a little flex and pull off the end. Just like that and then repeat with the other two so what you'll end up is something like this as you can see each individual cable is made up of tiny little strands which have a habit of sort of splaying out so in order to get them into the plug e easily what you need to do is take your finger and thumb give each one a little twist like so there's the earth And finally, the neutral. Just tidying them up, ready to go into the next stage, which is putting them into the plug. Now, when you get the plug, you'll notice that all the terminal screws are down, so you can't actually get a wire in. So what you want to do, just go around at each one of the three and unscrew them until they look like this. So we're nearly there. All we need to do is to take the wires that we prepared and pop them in, making sure they're all nice and tight. Notice I've bent the blue back, it just makes it a little bit easier in a minute. So take your earth, which is the longest one. Generally it's easy to do the longer ones first. Screw it in, nice and tight, making sure you've got no exposed wires anywhere. Just tidy up the blue, pop the blue in, Again, making sure that's nice and tight. And sort of flip it over, which means that the live will go in nice and tidily. And screw that up nice and tight as well. There we are. 
and give it a little tug to make sure it's all nice and tight. Flip over the clamp to hold the cord in place. And then you'll want to, in this case, just add the second screw, pushing down the earth to make sure it's all nice and tidy. Okay, looks good. So flip it over and take your screw. And screw that down nice and tight. And the other one. Oh, not quite tighten that one up enough. And there we have it. And there we have a close up of the finished product. So the final step is just to put the back on. So take your back, clip it in like so, get your screw, put it in there with your Phillips screwdriver, screw it down. Nice and tight. And there we have it. Ready for use. So you've learned in the video so far how to wire up a plug correctly, but it's good to look at some of the things that might go wrong. One of the most common faults is when you're removing the outer sheath that you cut a little bit too deeply and actually cut into the cables inside, exposing the bare conductors. If this happens to you, just snip all the cables off and start all over again. In this second, rather dangerous example, at first glance everything looks neat and tidy, but unfortunately you notice that the brown and the blue are in the wrong place. In this dangerous example, well, there's not much right with it to be honest. The most dangerous thing that stands out is there's far too many exposed wires. And what's happened here is that the earth wires probably touched the live wire, causing a spark, a fire, or possibly electrocution. Secondly, the neutral cable hasn't been cut correctly, so they've tried to kind of shortcut and get it in from the bottom when it should be going round from the top. And thirdly, the clamp that should be holding everything in place isn't actually clamping the outer sheath of the cable. So if you give it a tug, it's likely to pull things out. That's an example of how not to do it. And finally, in this last example, although the plug itself is wired up correctly, I think what's happened is the fuse may have blown and they've replaced it with a bit of tin foil, which is actually a really dangerous thing to be doing. So don't do it. So thanks for watching. I hope you found it quite helpful. If you've got any comments that you'd like to leave, please do get in touch. Thank you very much. Bye now.